My name is Martin, and these are my friends, Jan and Jacob. Hi. Seven years ago, we founded Craneballs together. Since then, we've released 13 mobile games, and our team has grown a lot. This is Craneballs today. Hi. To any passionate, highly motivated gamers and developers, a few years back, two industry veterans joined our ranks with plenty of expertise to share. A new era has begun, culminating in Planet Nomads, the game we want to show you today. Planet Nomads is a sci-fi sandbox game taking place on procedurally generated and vastly unexplored planets. You'll be building things that empower you to explore these planets and stay alive in their harsh environments. Surviving a crash landing is only the beginning of your journey. Salvage all you can from the shipwreck and build something useful. It is time to explore your new world, overcome its challenges and figure out a way out of this mess. Wouldn't it be great to build a huge planetary crawler and explore the wonders of a new and unfamiliar world? That was the idea that started Planet Nomads. Building and crafting is the cornerstone of our game. We aim to have the best and most developed building system seen in a sandbox survival game that will give you, its players, complete creative freedom. We have released a work in progress demo of the building part of Planet Nomads with over 100 different block types. You have seen what our community created so far. We will be supporting vehicles and structures thousands of blocks big, complete with realistic physics. Exploration is for all the exciting and for a good reason. Our planets are procedurally generated, but not in a random way. We've created several biomes so far, with more being made as we speak. Each biome has its specific aesthetics, animals and plants. Biomes serve as a basic input for our proprietary terrain engine that we named Sandy. The so-called noise generators create the general landscape, be it vast flat plains, valleys or mountain peaks. But it's the laws of nature that define the finer details. Whether you come across a thick forest or a grassland or a savanna, is based upon planet's climate, but also altitude and other characteristics like length of the day, gravity and atmospheric composition. Hi, my name's Shadi, and I've been working on Invisigun Heroes for about a year and a half. So I've been trying to figure out how to pitch the concept for a while now, but it's actually almost impossible with just screenshots or gameplay footage. I know that seems kind of strange, so let me just show you what I mean. It's basically a top-down multiplayer battle arena, but the thing is, everyone's invisible, including you. So on the left is what we all see during the game, and on the right is what's actually happening behind the scenes. I'm gonna walk a few steps down and to the right, and when I do that, I can hear my footsteps. As I run across the water, you can hear and see the splashes. Whenever I shoot, my character shows up on screen just for a moment. Now imagine three of your friends are also in this match. You can see where everyone starts, but right when the round begins, everyone fades out. One player just bumped into a tree, and I know this because it shook. It turned blue for a second and some leaves fell out of it. Now I know the blue player is somewhere right around that tree, so I can either shoot in that direction or use my character's hero ability. So in this match, I chose Celine, and she's the only character that can jump. You'll notice, as I jump over these obstacles, I'm basically taking shortcuts around the map, but I also give away my position. Invisigun has most of the typical multiplayer game modes you'd expect, but I think the game really gets interesting with the invisible twist on these modes, like Oddball or King of the Hill. Here you can see I'm controlling the hill area because it's lit up green, which is my character's color. But other players don't know exactly where I am inside the zone, and we can all kind of dance around this area, trying to fool each other. Another interesting layer is power-ups that spawn in certain locations around the map. It can be tempting to just stay put and hide out in one place, but if you do, you could miss out on picking up helpful boosts and items. On the other hand, it's also dangerous to just rush right out towards them. 
because once they've appeared, they become kind of like a focal point for everyone, more like bait. Since everyone's invisible, the real story of the match is basically told through all the little interactive set pieces. If you pay attention, you can hear the different surfaces players are walking on, or activating automatic doors, or even blowing up all the destructible stuff. Another thing that's super important to me is that Invisigun has a really fleshed out online system. It's already the kind of party game that's easy to just jump in and play the whole night. But I know it's also the kind of game you want to play anytime, even when you can't get everyone over. It has enough depth to support a really awesome and competitive online multiplayer community. But this is one of the hardest things to get right, and one of the main reasons I'm running the Kickstarter. I've basically been financing this myself since the start, and I'm at the point where I just need funding help for the remaining work. I spend most of my time working on the engine and tools, and getting the game foundation pretty solid. So the biggest things left are building out the online play support and producing a fun and diverse library of game assets. Thanks for watching. If you do decide to back this, make sure you check out all the cool rewards before some of the best ones start to disappear. Consortium The Tower is, like our previous game, a non-linear, single-player, first-person immersive simulation taking place entirely within a single location. This time, you'll find yourself at the center of a highly unusual hostage situation, atop a massive skyscraper in the heart of a near-future London, England. You will sneak, fight, explore, and talk your way through an interactive story that is driven entirely by you. There are no cutscenes, and we never take control away from you. Think the original Deus Ex video game combined with Die Hard. Let's take a look at a few different approaches to the same situation. A contingent of potential combatants are on an outdoor balcony, and you've been tasked with discovering what they're up to. First off, you could try your hand at diplomacy. In the tower, you'll be able to literally speak anytime and anywhere. It's him! Form around me! Okay, Bishop Six, easy now. Put down your weapon. Come on, Bishop. 
Drop it! Good! Uh, now, you're coming with us! A deal! This isn't the closest. Another approach is through the use of experimental stealth gadgetry. You can avoid potential combatants entirely. Reynolds, is that you? What the hell? Thank you, Bishop. I have access now. Interpreting it. Let's see. Whoa. You're not going to believe this, but that device... This can't be right. And then... There's always the wild card. Need I remind you, that is not a consortium issue part point. Turrets acquired. He's gonna do it in six. Don't you dare. Bishop Six, you are done. You might think that being kicked from the consortium means that you failed or that it's game over. But in the tower, the experience only stops when you die. Don't worry, Seeker. We've got you. Welcome. It appears as though Bishop Six has gone broke. The consortium has officially severed Finally, there is of course the John McClane approach. Explore the tower's ducts and shafts, and you may just discover a few of its hidden secrets. Everybody, I'm Rob Bukite. And I'm Ben Cassell, aka Co Carnage. We're the founders of Nectar Game Studios, and we're here to introduce you to our labor of love, a gritty, episodic CRPG set in a world where magic and technology coexist as equally grounded forces. We call it Project Resurgence. It is a love letter to the games of our youth, specifically Arcanum, Planescape Torment, Baldur's Gate, and Fallout 1 and 2, that encourage freedom and real role playing in a way we hadn't experienced before and rarely since. For over two years now, we've been working on this passion project, and we are so excited to finally be sharing it with you. This whole project started out as a challenge. We wanted to challenge ourselves to create a narrative-driven role-playing experience that lived up to the games we love. One of our favorite aspects of those games was the sense of epic exploration and immersion. To recapture that sense and make it our own, we focused heavily on developing a narrative that unraveled in an almost novel-like way. We've filled the game with rich descriptions and dialogue, with varied options to help supplement the sense of control the player has over their story. We also wanted our characters to resonate with all players, and we made sure to include a diverse and dynamic cast of female, LGBTQ, and multi-ethnic characters. Along with the challenges we wanted to present players, like Hardcore Mode and Permadeath, we also really wanted to test ourselves. We loved the methodical strategy of turn-based combat, as well as the visceral action of real time. So we decided to do something crazy and, like Arcanum, let players switch between both styles on the fly. Of course, we had to ensure both modes were robust and satisfying, so we couldn't get away with half-assing either of them. We had to whole-ass both of them. But wait! There's more! To cater to even more play styles, we're also including as many methods of non-violent resolution as possible. Think the original Deus Ex. Punching your way through problems isn't always the best option in Resurgence. Chow! Really? <laughs> Okay. One of the reasons we kept coming back to the games we loved as kids was that they gave us a real sense of control over our characters and their place in the story. We wanted to take that a step further, to give the player as much flexibility as possible, while still emphasizing the feeling that your character is growing in power and prestige. To achieve this, we designed our free-form character advancement system. No predefined classes here, and no penalties for versatility. As you overcome challenges and complete objectives, your character unlocks new talent trees, allowing you to increase stats and gain new abilities based on your progression in the game. We've kept restrictions to a minimum, and you're free to build any character type you desire. And here's a ton of other stuff that we worked our butts off to get in the game. We talk about those more on the page below, so if you're interested, definitely check it out. This whole journey started about two and a half years ago when Ben showed me a very early prototype he built himself. I knew he was onto something really special, and we needed to make it happen. It was that level of passion and clear vision that allowed us to build up a team of experienced and talented individuals from all over the world, all collaborating remotely and all completely unpaid. Now we've reached a point where we can't progress any further without funding, and that's why we're here today. 
We need you to help us make this dream a reality, and we want you to be a part of the creative process every step of the way. So that's our game, and thanks so much for checking us out. We're asking you to help make our dream a reality, so please, share the project, tell all your friends, and let's take this journey together. Truly, we can't thank you enough for your support, and thanks again for watching. Good show!